Hey guys, welcome in to another video. Um, here today, I have the almighty uh, JSauce here with me. What's up YouTube, it's JSauce, back again for another video. And this time it's with Crook, my good pal. And we're running up power rankings because... Yeah, we, we're just two very good community members here at NPBA. Yeah, and we just like to bully you all. Yeah, that too. That's pretty fun. Uh, I it, so is Unova the um, is it a mix of like under Sino but also like new coaches? Because I'm not really yeah in I... on the Unova lore. I know when we were originally doing the um, coach reveal stuff, it was a lot of brand new people. Yeah, where people didn't really know where to put them. Yeah, so I'm a little interested to see. Have you have you had any opinions with that? Just obviously being their mod, being able to have conversations with these guys. Do you think the skill level is pretty close, or do you think it's more of a variable thing? I, I think it's pretty close. Like there's like people who are have been in the draft uh, league like for a while, like Lilith and Frosty, and then you have uh, I think it was. Tanbeer or someone else, it's his first draft league back after six years, six year break. So, we have some like people who are experienced, people who are new, and just some people that we do not know where the skill level is at the moment. Yeah, I mean, that's that's just one of the things about being a bigger league. Uh, because when you have People in a smaller league integrate into that big league. There's oftentimes no people that can vouch for you. So having this Unova division, for the first time, by the way, is a great way for us to gauge where you are for future seasons. For sure. Um, but yes, this is Power Rankings for uh, Unova. Um, and let us go over how we rank them yeah uh so I, we got oh, go ahead joe <laughs> uh i was just gonna say first things first i like to get this out of the way early uh power rankings don't mean shit at the end of the day i've seen many people be last second to last in power rankings end up winning the whole league and i've seen people at the top of power rankings finish near the bottom like at the end of the day, this doesn't matter. Um, and quite frankly, like, who am I to judge what you drafted, especially if you're comfortable with it? The way I draft is uncomfortable for a lot of people. So, like, I have a different perspective on things than a lot of other people do. So that kind of weighs into my rankings personally. And please, do, like, if we give you a bad grand power rankings, it's whatever. Please don't go dropping your entire team trying to fix it up just because of what two guys said. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's your team. Uh, but, uh, and uh, last of all, uh, if you have any complaints, go complain to um, Chesboy. Or Jode. Uh, yeah. Jode loves teams. Jode will just ping me, though. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, so basically what we based them on, uh, you can see on screen... Um, Mainly, we look at momentum, um, hazard, hazard control, speed tiers, uh, and valuable terror captains. Those are like the main four that we look at. Because um, both Jay and I have won a championship recently, and those are the biggest things that we have noticed when it comes to having a good chance of going all the way. Yeah, I mean, I think a good base, like, power rankings are so subjective, it's hard to find a good baseline. I feel like a good baseline for power rankings and overall scaling is just, like, immediate threats, hazard control, terror captains, and there's one more, and speed tiers. Even though I think speed tiers are super overrated, it is just a great way to... Kind of gauge where a team's at just because it's numerical. Like, it's factual. There's no change to it whatsoever other than, like, choice scarf and setup moves, like, 
strictly numerical, and I like that to just kind of judge where you are compared to other teams. Um, that Also, huge momentum guy, but I won't knock you too hard if you don't have it. Um, but I also think um, Synergy's obviously super good. It's a team-based game, like... You just gotta have those synergies to mesh. You gotta have Pokemon that mesh. And if you don't, if it's just some guys, you're, you're gonna struggle. But, uh, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you can have none of these, you can have all of these. Like I said, doesn't matter. All comes Kirk, down do you to... want to go ahead oh. and uh, go on to our first team, or do you have something to say first? Oh, I will quickly say something. It all comes down to how you prep and how you play at the end of the day. Comfortability like, yeah. is a big one. <clears throat> Are you comfortable using your Pokemon? Exactly. Um, so anyway, uh, moving on to our last spot. Uh, unfortunately, Lilith, uh, the coach of the Mystical Milotics, um, now, I will say, Jay, that I did, like, help her in Grace ever so, so slightly. And this was, like, very rushed, because uh, I was at work at the time. Um, so I did help her in Grace ever so slightly. Um, she did end up getting Electros and Fortress. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Overall, I think your hazards are great. Like, you have, like, extremely great hazards between Clod and Fortress. That's all you need. Um, it means that Scolipede and Ogrepon can always run offensive sets. Um, Clod is a great grounded poison. It has Unaware and Water Absorb, two great abilities. You can bluff Water Absorb the whole game or Unaware the whole game. Um... Overall, this just, it feels like this is a bunch of comfort mods, I think. I, I would agree with that. Based off talking with Lilith and, you know, hearing what she has to say, this is just a bunch of comfort mods. Honestly, I fuck with it. I think based on the guidelines I talked about earlier, um, for saying a good baseline, I think it passes all of those 100%. pretty well. And, um... I mean, this is just a bunch of scary mons. Like, let's be real. I I don't really have a problem with any of this, and uh, I promise Lilith does not have a gun to my head. <laughs> I really hope she does not know where I live. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, Lilith... Listen, I mean absolutely no offense by this. Lilith may not be the best Pokemon player in the division, in the world... Great personality pick. Like, just strict, strictly will be one of the favorites in the whatever division she plays in. 100%. So I love this for her. Like, love her so much. And I do think this team can do a lot of damage. I think it's low floor, high ceiling, which is a little bit scary because, as you'll see, as we go up in placements, a lot of it is consistency. And, uh, and so uh, yeah. when you're kind of sketching out on that a little bit, especially with so many rock weak Pokemon, even though you got those removers, uh, it's just a little questionable. But I can definitely see this team kind of just crushing straight up. Like, I don't really have any more comments for it. No. Other than just it checks all the boxes I have, like. I 100% agree, and the thing I really like about this team is due to the amount of offensive pressure that she has, she can actually run Salamence, like, defensive utility with Wish and stuff, and Defog. Oh, I love defensive Mints. Defensive Mints is great. Um, especially oh. with, like, Banded Weavile, Ogapon, Mega Moor, Scolipede as well. Um, I think Scolipede is the most, like, Andrea Jam like overlooked Pokemon on this team. Terra Scolipede's a dog. Like oh. I saw this run through entire 
division in uh wdl force which you played yeah this thing's scary it really is it doesn't get terra boss but look it gets aqua tail it gets eq and it gets dual stab what else do you need you could just defense pair it too to get like two speed boosts in a sword stance exactly it's uh yeah fuck with the team unfortunately it's just got a little more questions than the rest of them yeah but I can see this going and pretty far. Legi going forward, like, well, not going forward, but, like, a lot of these teams are interchangeable. Like, yep. Oh, I had, I I had a very, very tough time making top five, let alone top three. Um, let alone top 16. Yeah. Um, Jay, if you want to take us away for number 15. Yeah, so, um,. Number 15, we got the uh, Aston Pyroars, coached by Larry Jinx, um, also known by a Japanese name in which I cannot read or pronounce. Um, yeah, this the problem with this draft for me, it's all personal preference. Did Bro just draft a bunch of frauds? I literally so, hate using every single Pokemon on this team. <laughs> um, so what happened was Jinx originally wanted low tier but didn't get it. So he goes... Yes, I know that, I know that. So he goes, cool, I'm gonna draft one good, like, high tier on and Gambit first round, and I'm gonna draft a bunch of low tiers. And because Blaziken is usually allowed in low tier because speed boost is bad, yep. he got Blaziken round two with speed boost. Base as fuck, but also King Gambit was not the move round one if oh, he I wanted to go high tier. 100% agree. I flamed but, for it, but it's it's a decent this pick. Is very funny when you're see without the knowledge that he's committing to the bit. My take on this team is like I, I do I don't fuck with that at all. But knowing he's committing to a bit makes this funny enough to be like, okay, this is interesting. Do I like it? Like, we, probably not. Is it a team I'd use? Probably, probably not. not. But, but is, I can see it. Well, yeah, but is there a whole ass Terra Neuvern on that team? Yes. Is it scary as fuck? Yes. There yes. Is. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, right? Like, these are scary mods, even though I don't think they live up to the expectations. Hate to use them. People are fucking terrified of Gambit, Aspothra, Blaziken. Even Nido Queen sometimes obviously respects Noivern. Like this is gonna be prep hell. Oh yeah, I a hundred percent agree. Like if you can force your opponents to play to not lose instead of playing to win, you already won the match. Like flat out. That's my experience with drafts like this. Oh, I like the. Here's the thing, right? Like. I personally, despite you having a lot of hazards, I don't love of them. Like, Tinkaton Rocks is better than Gambit Rocks and Nido King Rocks. I still don't like running Tink Rocks. Sandy Shocks, without Terra, it can run, it can afford to run Rocks and Spikes more just because it can be defensive most weeks. Um, I still don't love it. Bramble Gast. Are you ever bringing it more than like six of any of these? I don't know. I do fuck with the depth though. I've I've become a bar a budget Bartholomew recently. Uh, love budgeting. Uh, so yeah, th listen. This team when I first saw it, like I was closed minded. I thought it had so many holes, and now that I'm going over it again, it's not that bad. No. It's not that bad. So uh, I'd love to hear a little bit more of your thoughts before we move on. Um, yeah, I think, um, as Jay said, let's be real, is Bramblegust coming more than to a couple games? Because if not, you're running Defog on Tornadus every game. Because uh, your other two removers are not real removers. You're not running Defog on Neuven and Blaziken. Let's be real. Um... I think Aspathra is, like, I think it's fraudulent. Like, if your opponent knows what Aspathra does, they shouldn't lose to it. They should always have a way around it. 
Um, especially without Terra, I think it's a fraud. Um, Tink's okay. So is Sandy. Mega Bro, uh, due to our ruling of you don't have to Mega Turn 1, you can do a few things with Regenerator Slow Bro before it Megas, so it's not too bad. Yeah, and that was a whole instance last season. That was a whole debacle. Yeah. Uh, also, going back to Spothra, low-key, its best set in draft is like Specs, Lumina Crash, U-Turn coverage, in yeah. my opinion. I used it with Terra, and like, albeit it was high-tier Terra format, I, I kind of thought it was a fraud. Like, I, I do not like using it. Yeah. Um, I think the... Uh, I initially had this last, but looking back over it, I think just the threats... Um, that Neuvern Blaziken brings with the support of Tink Screens, which is its best set. Fight me on that if you want, but Screens Tink is its best set. Um, like you, yeah. I think it's it's a decent team. Uh, you committed to the bit, which I will give you props for. Obviously, it's going to rank lower than a lot of the other teams. Due to it. Oh, this team does not fucking deal with Earthquake users. Uh, you will notice that throughout the yeah. whole PRs, bro. I was no, blaming I know. I'm aware of that, but, like, I mentioned that because, like, if you're scared of Sandy Shock, like, I had Sandy Shocks recently in a draft, and anyone, like, anytime Sandy looks looked good at a matchup, my opponent just brought fucking air balloon ground type. <laughs> I literally couldn't touch it. So, like, that's mainly why I bring the point up. Because if that happens to you, you're you kind of fucked. You just spring try attack. It's fine. Bring the yeah, like I, I literally <laughs> no, I literally brought like power gym for fucking like Rillaboom and Terra fly. Or is like I didn't know what Terra it was, but for fucking air balloon Rhyperior, I brought power gym <laughs> just to fucking snipe it off a of Terra. Uh, flying is pretty cool, but like that should not need to happen. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. You 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 want to move on to uh, the next team? You gotta take it over, I assume. Uh, I'll take this because oh boy. Um. So we have um King Zuck um number fourteen. Um didn't give us coach uh team name. Um. Oh. I don't, like, I don't know if you were keeping up with Crook Opinions. I was, like, ugh. I know you roasted the fuck out of this team. <laughs> I hated this team for so long. I'm not gonna lie. Like, Gliscor round one, like, that would have made it back to you round two. I'm not gonna lie. Um, you probably could have drafted something like, else. Wasn't this, like, pick 13? Um... Pick fourteen. Oh, fuck. I mean, yeah, makes sense. Uh I will commend you for committing to the double poison heal bit. That's pretty funny. Um, but oh boy, I do not like how you drafted basically four, well, three ground week potentially four because you don't really want to run levitate wheezing each week as it's your only gra uh potential ground of poison. Uh, but you did draft, like, three, technically four, um, Levitate Mons, or Mons immune to ground. I don't know, this team just feels clunky. Because your fastest Mon being Mega Pidge, it does not want to come every week. Um, this is from experience. I did not bring Mega Pidge every week in a league, because it's best... Two best moves are Hurricane, Heat Wave, and I guess Hyper Beam. It doesn't get Focus Blast. Bigger it pitch. gets U Turn. It. Yeah, it gets U Turn, it gets Roost, it gets Toxic. Like, it has like one, maybe two different sets, but you're always running Hurricane slash Heat Wave or Hyper Beam on that set. I don't know. This team just feels really clunky to me. I mean, I, I, I would agree with that. I think the best three picks of this draft were Dracovish, Tyrantar, Mega Pidge. I I actually really like that core, even though I think Dracovish is cringe. And uh, Mega Pidgeot is like, eh. 
I think together, actually, they mesh super well. Um, obviously, Gly score as well. Uh, the double steal is a little questionable, but honestly, whenever your first four mods can't get poisoned, it's a little funny at least. Yeah, And you have so many like, levitators, flying types, that doesn't like, really matter that much. I don't mess... I can't say I have a problem with this team. It's just very... It just looks like some guys, to be honest. Looks like... No disrespect. Looks like you've kind of put some of your favorite Pokemon together and then drafted a little sand core around it. Yeah. I'll, I'll be uh, I'll be honest. I liked how you like picked up your last five picks that are immune to the ground. I'm really happy you did that. Because EQ spam was going to be a big problem for you. Um, I think you rounded out the, like the last half of your team pretty nicely. I think Terra Wimscott's going to be eh. You're going to probably bring Stall Wimscott every week. Um, I'm telling you, Dracovish to Terra Rotom Frost was kind of a 96 Michael Jordan run. <laughs> like, phenomenal. Well, and I'm not even a Weezing or Rotom Frost fan. Like, I just think they fit so well into this team. Like, honestly, I can't even tell you what my biggest concern is. I feel like the U... Okay, this is going to sound very nitpicky. The U-Turners feel fake. Like, And what I mean by that is Whimsicott, I've never seen it click U-Turn in my life. Jirachi doesn't want to have to click it. Glyscore score is match like dependent. It. Yes, it likes clicking it, but not every week. And then Pidge is probably a uh, mod you're bringing about half the weeks. And when you have a Pokemon like Dracovish, literally the most mind-off Pokemon in the game, you want Pokemon that can just mash momentum. Especially, like, I feel like Okay, Jirachi. It's weak to it's like weak to ground and fire. It's a great U-turn target for Dracovish. I'm not sure about the rest. Like I feel like you want to get U-turn targets that bait in that Pokemon that Dracovish just mollywops. Flicks a button on. Yeah. Yeah. But honestly, like like we said, the last two teams, honestly pretty in interchangeable. I wouldn't have a problem with you putting the 16th. I probably wouldn't have a problem with you putting it up to like 12. Yeah. It's... Uh, none of these teams, I'm surprised. Like, Or had a couple teams I was like really digging into. But these teams have been honestly pretty well rounded for the most part. No gigantic holes. Yeah. No, I 100% agree. Yeah. I'm glad this, uh, this worked out this way because now I get to slurp off the next team. <laughs> uh, I can do it first, so uh, I'd like to move on to that, please, if you'd let me. Let's go. All right. So before before I like glaze this team too much, I will I will say my one gripe with this team is like no phenomenal breaker. Like I know you you're gonna say Raging Bolt's a phenomenal breaker. You're gonna say Iron Crown's a phenomenal breaker. Fair, but you also have Megalophony Greninja. And both Raging Bolt and Crown can be phenomenal cleaners as well. I would love, fucking love to see just a Pokemon with like, I don't know. I, I guess your breaker is like Scarf Landorus, which isn't bad. But I will, like, when I think of Iron Crown, I think of pairing it with like a fucking Cure Black. And you just mash the nuke button and let Crown pick off with Tacky and Cutter, etc. Like, I had Megalop, Cure and Black. And Megalop literally farmed kills off Kieran Black doing 90% to everything. Uh, same with Greninja. But, yeah, I love... Like, if this... If we made these power rankings based off the first six picks, this would be number one, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, and now, I promise I'm not biased, even though, you know, Greninja, Raging Bolt, Iron Crown are three of my top five Pokemon ever in competitive, and Megalop had a phenomenal season for me. 
and I really like Landorus. Um, I just got a bash on the last five Pokemon. I think that's really what sets this team behind, especially when your only Terra Pokemon is Exeggutor. I know I don't want to doubt Eggy, but that as your only Terra Captain kind of sucks. Let's be real. Vulpix, like a fine budget pick if you just want to run Mono Sun run one week. But I feel like the solution to this team is just Axe, Dirge, and Beyond. You can probably keep Kamala and just get some, you know, get some momentum, get some hazard. Well, sorry, not momentum. Get some hazards and hazard control. Because let's be real, are you ever clicking spikes and toxic spikes on Greninja? No. So you got to get that hazard control and uh, some good tear captains. This team would be top echelon. The speed, the speed tiers are a little wonky as well. Yeah. Oh wait, I did. I did also want to see only EQ switch in. I guess other than Landorus, is that executor, which is probably tearing out of its grass type. Yeah, it's a it's a very very common theme in Universe this season. Apparently, that everyone just likes being EQ weak. Or that's how it is. Or two. Or almost everyone. Um, but yeah, I actually, I dig this team a lot, um, it really, yeah, it, I agree with Jay, it's your bottom five picks minus Kamala, I think that's where this team just really falls off, uh, no real hazards, um, like I guess you can click rocks on Lando, um, Kamala being your only reliable remover as well. I do, uh, I do want to say um, that it is worth putting out there that Justin was a replacement coach and did not actually draft most of the Pokemon on this team. Like He used uh, his grace transactions to like, kind of sculpt this team, so a lot of the board was already taken. Yeah, this much is true. Um, but yeah, if you have any final thoughts on this. Um... I mean, nothing really more than I already said. Like, I feel like this is a pretty easy team to dissect. Pretty obvious. It's like, yeah. super front-loaded, but just phenomenal Pokemon. And then the back is uh, more to be decided. Um, and it's just like, this is a classic, like, if you took a JSOS draft from, like, last year, classic JSOS draft. Like, just get <laughs> powerhouses at the top and just deal with the consequences like no hazard control i've just tried to bear myself but this is one of those low floor high ceiling drafts again and where the top teams kind of value consistency yeah but uh i'm good to move on if you are all right at number 12 we have uh the frosted unique coned cops that's not the full name but we're going with it because that's all i could be bothered putting into the document um, and it's still not the funny word yep uh coached by frosty gm um god i like i flamed frosty for mega arrow and i still don't i still don't think this is a mega arrow team i still don't like mega arrow in general um Low key, I I hate to say it because it never gets picked. Or I I feel like Mega Arrow is a build around Mon. Yes, a hundred percent. And when you have these gen this Gen Nine wave of new Pokemon that are also build around Pokemon, think like Golden Go, it which is arguable. Think of like Gouging Fire, all of those Pokemon that love to just be the guy on the team. It's kind of hard to fit Mer Mega Arrow into a draft. And I, I don't think this is a Mega Arrow draft, but I respect the hustle, if nothing else. I think it, it's getting there. I think it's about halfway there to a Mega Arrow team. Um, but other than Mega Arrow, I think your removal is good. Like, you're, you have Serena and you have Empoleon. You're mostly running Rapid Spin on Serena every week. Because uh, Empoleon loves running Rocks itself, Roost, Flip Turn, and then Filler, or like Ice Beam, 
as well, other than rocks. Um, Blood Moon, as you know, Jay, is Blood Moon. It's very hard to switch into. Um, fun, fun fact, not that matters because, like, you have Urshifu single. Did you know just a little bit of, if you, of course, if you go max HP with just 16 defense investment, I believe Ursaluna can live in adamant close combat from Urshifu. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> and then it Oko's back with Blood Moon. Yeah. That, like, if you have told me Ursula Blood Moon 1v1's Ursufu single with, like, a little bit more than max HP, I would have told you you were on crack. And then I used it. <laughs> and then it won the SPS. This Pokemon's dumb. Yeah. Uh, I will say, I will say, I do have a few complaints with this team. One of them is, I feel like it's kind of throwing to not get a Trick Room Center with Blood Moon and Vicavolt. Terra Vicavolt at that. Um, albeit those are really the only two guys that benefit from Trick Room. But, oh well. Also, you fucking, you drafted, like, was Nat Dex 115? 120. <laughs> 120? You drafted with like 114 points, man. What the fuck is Santa Scorch doing? That po <laughs> Listen, I've used Santa Scorch before might be the worst mon I've ever used, ever put on a roster. This Pokemon is dicks. It contributes nothing. Right. Right. Like, you might as well get, like, a bulky ghost type at that point. You just get a mon that fills a role, that fills a niche. You see, you know, what? It, what's my team lacking? Spiker? Go out and get a cheap Spiker. Yeah. Uh, I do... Fuck with like Urshifu single, Ursaluna Blood Moon, and Polyonkla Fable. It, hell, it's probably everything except for Arrow, and even that's questionable, and Senta Scorch. Yeah. Like, I think this is a great group of guys. I'm questioning just a little bit on how well they synergize with each other. I also don't know about Gengar and a Pursuit meta without Terra. I think Gengar's on full but, watch without Libertate. Let's be real. Yeah, probably, especially in a pursuit meta. Yeah. Oh, I also fucking hate the speed tiers. Well, sorry, after Urshifu. I'm telling you, if there's a spiker out there that's cheap and work and that's got like a base eighty to eighty five speed, go get it. I don't care if it messes up your defensive type chart. Sasquatch is not that guy. Yeah. But I will say and Terra and Talion is him. Because yeah, uh, no, I agree. And uh, trust, uh, I don't know I if you remember in WBL like two last... games oh. in KDA, the Pokemon's him. Yeah, in WDL last season in casual, yeah. I used this thing without Terra, and it was claiming lives. So with Terra, this guy is him. It's also like one of the strongest Pokemon in Or. Like I had a whole conversation about it last night. For the ore power rankings, Mon is cracked. Yeah. Uh, also, round six Clefable. Can we just mention that as well? Listen, people think Clefable's on Fraud Watch. I listen. I I know it's like not as good as it used to be. I tried to move it up just so I didn't have to face it. Now, luckily, I did get into low tier, so I don't have to regardless. But it's just annoying. Yeah. Like. And All the Clefable employers I talk to now are like, yeah, it's not good. I'm just like, okay. Like, when I used it, I wasn't amazed by it, but it was consistent at least. I, I'll i tell you what I used. I used Magic Guard, Life Orb, Flamethrower, Moonblast, Psychic sets. Yeah. <laughs> like, half my games. That's where his Pokemon really shines, is you prep for defensive, and that just brings, like, Cosmic Power slash Calm Mind slash Offensive Breaker set. And you kind of have to guess between the three. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, um, moving on. We have the Berlin Espions coached by Pulse. So, like, I'm, I'm not a betting man. 
But when I see Coco, I always place money lines for the chat. Like, is the next pick going to be Iron Bundle, Iron Treads, or Iron Moth? I'm low-key surprised to see Iron Bundle because people think it's on Fraud Watch just because Hydro Pump, this, that, whatever. And I've been burned by this Pokemon before. Like, it's missed two Hydro Pumps for me in a semifinals game that arguably mattered. I don't care. This Pokemon is so good. Literally, in all the matchups, it beats 75% of the Pokemon in the matchup just with its stabs and freeze dry. And then you can just run Flip Turn, Encore, whatever you want as last. It doesn't really matter. Booster Energy, fantastic. Specs, fantastic. Never Melt Ice, fantastic. Heavy Duty Boots, I don't even have to say it. It's a phenomenal Pokemon. And that kind of goes downhill from there. Not in the sense that these picks are bad. I don't think, you know, Venusaur, Corviknight, Crook, Uxie are bad. I just think I it almost feels like you forgot you had a Coco team. Personally, um, like, outside of Iron Thorns, you just didn't lean into it I, enough. I, I, feel I like... hard respect that. I'll be honest, I hard respect that. Um, no, I do too, because you're making your uh, team not cheap. Like, it's respectable. But it's, in terms of, like, being good... Uh, okay, I shouldn't put it like that. <laughs> it, it's just a little confusing whenever you're used to just seeing people hard commit. Oh, 100%. You know what? Um, can we just say he has two Crook All Stars on his team? So, like, I'm already happy about that. Extra points for yeah. Mega Venu and Corv. Um, um, this Iron Sword is also going to be fucking just putting the work in. Yeah. Uh, the like, few the few so issues I have with this team is one, your massive ass speed gap between, uh, let's be real, Max Speed, Crocodile, and Tapu Koko. Yuxi's never running Max Speed, and Crocodile's probably running Scarf, and so is Flamigo. Like, so then, really... You have, like, a huge speed gap if you're running Dual Scarf on Crocodile and Flamigo. Um, your massive-ass Ice Weakness, because Iron Bundle isn't a real Ice Resist. Um, ice seems really free. Like, you may have Thick Fat Mega Venu. Uh, it tanks. It does tank a bit, but if it's, like, a, like, what, Spex Glaceon, for example, or something... Something along those lines. Spix Cure and Black. It's going to be really hard for you to switch into. Um, no real remover other than Corv. Uh, Dramp is clicking Terra Normal. Hyper Voice. I don't know if it gets Boom Burst. I don't think so. Terra Dragon Draco Eject Pack is also a viable set. Yeah. Uh, you see, I, I think I figured it out. What my like main gripes other than it just being a little confusing. Um like listen, I know I don't be clicking the hazard control all the time. I don't be spamming it in games, but I I feel like you gotta have the option. And like yes, Corv is probably the best defogger in that decks right now. Um but man, you kinda just gotta have spin with like Yuxi and Crook. Both like Crook is, doesn't love to run rocks, but it runs it enough to where it's respectable. Yeah. And also, I'm a big spikes guy. I think rocks are overrated as hell for the most part, but man, do I love me some spikes and some T-spikes. <laughs> and, I mean, without a rapid spinner and just being forced to run, like, defog, I think it's more passable. Um, but my big gripe with this team is... No bulky water. Like, Iron Bundle kinda requires a bulky water. Yeah. Or else it just kinda folds. Now, Venusaur, you could make the argument that's basically a bulky water if you really think about it. Even though it's neutral to ice because of thick fat. Pokemon's so damn stupid, tanky. That'll do like 40% and then synthesis off. Yep. Oh, I do... Like, this is a pure vibe test team. Um, 
I don't love how defensive it got, uh, being that it's terrain and also Gen 9. Yeah, it got but really defensive. It, it's a lit like, the Pokemon itself are consistent, other than Iron Bundle, of course. The Pokemon itself is consistent. I'm wondering if the team as a whole is consistent, especially, like, my biggest gripe with Coco isn't that it's cheap or that, like, it's boring or that's not good by itself. It's the fact that so many Paradox Pokemon are here at this point. There's a good chance, like, six out of the eight teams you face have a, a, or a Cork Drive Pokemon. Yeah. That you could just, especially in this team where you didn't grab all of them, there's so many Paradox Pokemon you face that just get a free boost off Coco. Right. But, uh, yeah, I think uh, I think it's a good point to move on. Yeah. Uh, coming in yeah. next, we have the Munich Meloetters, coached by Punslinger. Um, God, I know you have Nihiligo, Jay, in AAA, but I just cannot get behind this mod. I cannot listen, get behind listen. Nihiligo. Yeah, I mean, it's... I don't want to say it's an acquired taste because I don't even know if I like it yet. I just drafted it because it kind of fit what I needed. I'm very indifferent on it. I've seen it do some nasty things. I've also seen it do nothing. Um, so I'm really questionable on it. I do think, like, when you sit down and look at the mons here, I... You want to talk about consistency? This is by far the most it's gotten. Garchomp, I would debate outside of Lando, and obviously you can talk about Tusk now. Yeah, the most consistent Pokemon of all time. Like, I would not hate having that conversation. I would totally agree. Um, well, Lando is a goat. Um, I would love to see some more hazards. Like, whenever I see gold, I just think of hazard spam. And I know that gold's a great Pokemon without it, but man, every single gold team I brought had fucking hazards out the ass, and it was annoying for all of the opponents. Cind now, Cinderace is a little questionable here just because it loves running Court Change, and like, uh, Court Change. Uh, even then, that's know? like, I'll, I'll like test you on that. Um, it's matchup dependent. No, I agree. I don't think it's its best set or its best move, like some other people will say. I'm just saying, like, with Golden Go, like, who wants to hazard spam yeah. your opponent? It's uh, a little sus. Now, obviously, you get it so nobody else can do it to you, but Cinderace, very dependable, very consistent. Same with Aloe, same with Mandibuzz. Like, this team just feels disgusting. And then you got some potential win cons. And, like, Nihilego, Logan Hisui, Terra Dianti, and Meloetta. Two of the best Terras that we've Terra. allowed. Yes, I agree. And, like, I know not everything's going to go back to Ore, but these are two of the best Terra Caps in Ore as well. Like, Max Pointers. Yeah. Um, these Pokemon are super I'll be honest, like, I look at this team and I see Nihiligo and Lilligant that look out of place to me. I'll be 100% honest. Like, yes, you can do some sunny day shenanigans with Lilligant. It just, it feels out of place. I look at this team and I see the other eight mons and I love them. I think they're great. I think they work perfectly with I, each I other. I where you're coming from, but I, I feel like I get the vision. I think the vision is... Obviously, you got Garchomp. And you got Garchomp can uh, is probably one of the better Pokemon chipping stuff down. And same with like your um, momentum spam with like Cinderace, Mandibuzz, Aloe. I feel like the idea for Nihilego will get were just to come in, clean up. Like Nihilego can run like Specs, Beast Boost Speed, or, like Life Orb, whatever it does. Lilligant has Victory Dance. I see the vision, and they, you need listen. You also need to fill the one thirty-five to um, 
at that point is 119 to the 102 speed gap. Yeah. I think these picks are fine on paper. I'm questioning whether those are the mods for the job. Yeah. Um, so I don't have a problem. I do have a problem with no rapid spin, though. Because, like, one of the better ways I've found to deal with Goldengo is just to hazard stack uh, the Goldengo back, because people don't run heavy-duty boots with Goldengo. Uh, on a Goldengo team. Yeah. You just don't. So, yeah, that's a little sketch, but overall, yeah, th this team is just whack. In, in a good way. Like, this is gonna be annoying. All right. But um, moving on. Next up, Dior, uh, the Ultra Space Conquerors. You can take this away. Um, I'll so, be back. <laughs> awesome. So we want to talk about consistency, man. Obviously, Lando had that title as uh, most consistent Pokemon ever, but we saw the rise of Great Tusk. This thing said, "Sit down, Landorus." I'm you, but better. And uh, Cell Steel has always been annoying, always been consistent as well. Um, honestly, pretty good Great Tusk pairing, given that when I see a Cell Steel, I want to bring my Electric type and my Fire type, and Great Tusk shit on both of them. Uh, I don't like love Victini, no Terra. Roaring Moon, it's a very polarizing mod. Love Pre Marina. Roserade, questionable on Terra Stack Attack, at Demon, Fuck Kilowattril, Mega Bayonet, Demon, Grafi Ice, Fun. That's my little rundown. For the team itself, I I do think that you know the hazard game is not where you want to be. Like Tusk being one of two rockers and the only Literally, the only removal option on this team sucks. Like, Tusk, yes, it can run rocks and spin. You're losing out on so much by being forced to do that. And Spikes and T-Spikes on Roserade, who also just like to be offensive. Um, I just really can't get over the hazard situation. Like, this might be a heavy-duty boot spam team. Um... Outside of that, like, the team isn't that bad. I, I mean, it, I will say you're only Trick Room Setter, I believe. Mega Bayonet might get Trick Room. Your only Trick Room Setter is Stack Attacker, who's not only is probably the best Trick Room Pokemon we have in that decks right now, especially with Terra. Um, but... It gets Trick Room itself. It's its own setter, which is good. Um, Bayonet's a demon. This kind of looks like a team that you slap together as well, just like random Pokemon generator. But I fuck with it. It's like... I feel like it requires a lot of good use and creative building to pull off, which... Listen, I'm not discounting you because Unova is a place of all different skills. But I'm a little skeptical seeing it in Unova than I am with Kanto. Like, Celesteela, Tusk, even Primarina, and Victini all require some creative building to get the most out of. Like, at the end of the day, Primarina is a button clicker. People see it as a wall. I used to see it as a wall. It just loves to click buttons. Um... Outside of that, defensively, it's looking pretty well. I think, you know, like, outside of, like, Excadrill and Zygarde matchups, this team is, like, fine with ground types. Be like, Kilowattrol is not a real ground type immunity, but Stack Attack can easily tear out of its ground weakness and its fighting weakness. Um, yeah, this team is not a team I would draft. But I can respect it. I think it's objectively good. There's just a few flaws in it. I also don't love the drop-off between base 60s and 13. Now, I know you're going to say, Oh, well, JSAW, Stack Attack is like one of the slowest Pokemon in the game. Of course you're going to have drop-off. Yeah, but also, Pokemon with like 50 speed and below 
I say 50 because if you're like 55, 50 or above, really, you could put in not very much investment and outspeed like a base Celestila yeah. instead of just running max bulk. But like if you're running 50 speed or anything below, you can just run max bulk and be fine. So I think this team, it's, a, it's another one of those high ceiling, low floors. I've probably said that again, but yeah, this team is a bunch of interesting Pokemon. I'm very excited to see how this turns out. Uh, yeah. Cook, are you back? I think I, I heard here. you. Yes, hello. Sorry. Awesome. Um, so, uh, do you, you have any comments? I kind of touched on everything I could think of. Yeah. Uh, Pillow's not a real mon. It's fraud. It's fraudulent. I don't care what you say. Yeah, I, I said it fucking sucks. <laughs> it sucks dicks. Um, I'm currently counting how many Hurricane misses it did throughout my championship run. And at the moment, it's a lot. <laughs> um, I think... Uh, I think it's just the offensive pressure, I think, is what's really lacking here. I'll be 100% honest. Like, Do you think the offense pressure is what's... I think so. What's lacking? Because you can run... Really? Uh, I'll be 100% honest. I think because you run... Looking at this team... You run Celestia and Prim defensively 100% of the time. And yes, I know Fair. Prim is like much better offensively now. And I agree with you that once you figured it out, it was much better offensively. I 100% agree with you. But I think Prim's spot on this team, role on this team, is like defensive AV. You have Steeler, who's your physical wall. Tusk can even be max HP. Um... You have Victini that clicks the two funny buttons in V-Create and Final Gambit. Just deletes them on immediately. A threat. Uh, Roaring Mid. It's mid, but it still does clicks knockoff. Even Choice Band and knockoff hurts something. Um, and then you have like Stack Attacker. You have Bayonet that just automatically gets a kill with Frank's the Destiny Wand. Um, if you call it right. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I think there's way too many options for stuff to be offensive. Like, I don't care if Primarina, Celestia feel like they have to be defensive. You get the right matchup, and you just run Specs Primarina, and like then that. that can really be your only source of damage output, and you could still easily win a game. Like, I feel like there's way too many options for offensive pressure to be the, um, the problem. My problem was I feel like Tusk, Steela, Victini to an extent, pre-marina and even like rosarade all reward creative builders and i was questioning you know ability to do that as well as all of them feel like they have a specific role in this team oh, instead yeah. of being interchangeable yeah it's basically the spark notes but uh i think i've said everything i've wanted to say like twice about this team <laughs> so yeah. i'm good for you. i'm going to take a break real quick and uh you talk about coach abyss and uh their team yeah, the pretentious, pretentious Pangoros. Uh, now, Abyss, you know, I I really do like your team. Uh, obviously, you said you had a plan, a certain, like, a matchup for Terra Vaporeon. And I'll wait for it. I think... Uh, how can I explain this? First pick, Meow, great. Especially when you're directly on wheel. I think it's... I think it's a good pick, especially on the la later end. Um, and then coming back with Taunty, grabbing a defensive option that can also be offensive is great with regen. you got your water immunity straight away and Vaporeon, which is great. Um, I think this team synergizes well. Um, you also have Terra Galvantula. I think that's kind of fraudulent. Um... Same with Komoto. I'm still iffy about Komoto as just a mono general. I think it's just been power creep too much. I think your first seven picks are phenomenal. I love your first seven picks. Especially with Mamoswine having access to Trailblaze now. Um, this thing can just dent holes in teams if they're not ready for it. Um, Azelf, great sash lead with rocks and then clicks explosion afterwards. Deals massive damage to something. Can also just be Specs or Expert Belt. Um, I love your first seven picks, 
Especially Iron Moth. Iron Moth can just win game straight up if you position it right with boost it, it with boost the speed and then fire it on special attack boost. Zen can outright just win games. Um I think it's just your last three picks. Like Porygon can do some stuff with Eevee Light and it is actually bulky enough to to the point where it can live hits and do stuff, so not too concerned about the Porygon pick, I'll be hundred percent honest here. Um Offensive flying spam hurts you though. Yeah. Um, Mega Aggron's coming to every game, so that's really your only flying resist. I think that's okay. But if you come across like the Mega Pidgeot team, um, or like a really hard hitting uh, flying stab mon, the team struggles against it. At least um, they picked up Tool, so they don't have to face it. Yeah. Uh, um, I, was yeah, my, I, I was basically just saying that the first seven picks love, um, yeah. and in the last three, uh, FB. Yeah, my big gripe with this team is like, what the actual fuck do you do if you encounter spikes or rocks? Like, genuinely. Yeah. Are you bringing Corn Defog every week? Corn loves to be offensive and AV uh, simultaneously or in different sets. Um, now, personally, I didn't use Meowth to its fullest potential. I didn't lo particularly love using it, but I respect it at this point. Now, I do question whether it's a round one pick, but if this was direct wheel, understandable. Uh, 15th. Okay, yeah, that's understandable. Yeah. Personally, yeah. I don't fuck with Terra Vaporeon. Yeah. And no. Terra Galvantula is like it's fraud. fine it, it's, it's fraud just gonna be running with it's just gonna be running terra electric specs slash life orb or it's gonna be running terra ghost rat or uh sticky webs uh now i did talk to abyss about terra vaporeon and abyss has like something that they want to do particularly with terra vaporeon they just have to have the right matchup for it me when i click acid armor calm mind recover scold <laughs> Uh, but uh yeah this team is uh i don't know how i feel about it i it's got some mods i like got some mods i don't it's it's just middle, Iron through, Mon, middle of the road i i think i counted and in, in like a three week span iron moth went like oh for six and fiery dance boost for me <laughs> i cut his ass immediately like i was not putting up with that and it was they all mattered, to, not all of them mattered, but, like, would have put me in so much better position. Yeah. And fuck, yeah, it's just, I, I'm different, I'm indifferent on Como, because, like, it feels like it should be extremely good, and then just oftentimes, it's just, it's just power like, crap. Yeah, yeah, it really has been. Um, But then again, like, Clanger of Souls, like, if you just get off a of free... Or scale or whatever it is, I I can never tell the difference. If you just get a free Omni boost uh, on something that's switching out, like the game becomes a lot harder for your opponent. Yeah, especially with Sorry, having access to like bulletproof and soundproof that stops both Moonblast and Hyper Voice. Well, and that feels a lot easier considering that I love the momentum. You have it on Moth, Torn, Azelf, Galvantula, which. I did not like using last season, but I can respect it. Like, this team kind of fucks. Like, the more I looked at it, the more I like it. I just wish there were a few minor tweaks. Yeah. Uh, mainly yep. just Terra, Vaporeon, Como, and uh, Porygon. I don't have a problem with it, but I'd probably just get caught at the crossfire. Yeah. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so now we got the, uh, oh man, I'm so glad I get to talk about this team. Oh, mate, you get uh, to talk Unova. about it, I get to talk about it. <laughs> you know, but can we have a heart-to-heart -heart real quick? How the actual fuck did you let somebody get Mega Scissor here in black? Like, like, walk me through the process of, like, how you just let this happen. The, like, the team that's in first, I, I legit said the exact same thing. I, I, I... Yeah, no, I get that too. But like, I don't understand this. Yeah, it's like crazy. 
And like, okay, I'm not gonna act like Zapdos Galar's the like should have went like round one or two, but down the board fifth round, that's where I got it. It was phenomenal with Karen Black. I'm expecting nothing less. Uh, the real problem for me here, I guess it's not even a problem, is Special Breakers. Yeah. Sure, you got both your team captains, but like Iron Boulder low-key should have been a Special Breaker. Uh, um, I, I excuse you, Iron Boulder can run special sets. I use it to be a Corviknight. Listen, okay, I get it. I, I'm not even going to say in theory because it's got 68, but trust me, I dabbled into Special Iron Boulder sets. It just gets no coverage. Like, it it just doesn't. Like, if it got some coverage, I'd understand it because it gets Meteor Beam. But, like, that's about it. Uh, this is a random-ass Sarah Ledge. Random-ass Iron Boulder. I fuck with Mr. Ops and Wiggly Heavy, though. Like, some goaded low tiers. I, this team has just got a lot of good Pokemon on it. And a lot of Pokemon I enjoy. Which is one of the things I look at, which is power rankings, which is uh, why some people argue I'm a little biased. Well, but, uh, biased in some way. The, the thing that's really making me upset about this team and Loki probably stopping you from putting this at like a top three position, uh, outside of Iron Boulder and Sarah Ledge being random and like the special breaker problem, how are you going to draft a Kira Black team with no rapid spinner? And your only defugger being Scizor. Like, how does that end yeah. up happening? That is like... I'm not trying to bash you too hard, but like... That's like... Kira Black's whole thing is that it doesn't want to run heavy-duty boots. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> I think... This team has so many elements that I like... But this entire team is just so... What's the word I'm looking for? Polar? Like, I either fucking love the Pokemon, or I hate the Pokemon. Yeah. Really no in between. Uh, like, the Terra Cats so are amazing. This, yeah, I think 7 was a pretty good landing spot um, overall, just because of that. Yeah. It's a good little average. Um. But, yeah. Outside of the remover problem, like, even, you know, if I stay at the Iron Boulder problem, the Sarah Ledge, just kind of being random. Literally, if there was just, like, one good rapid spinner, this would probably just shoot up top five. Yep, no, I 100% agree. Like, when I used Kieran Black, I had Blastoise and Delmiza spinners, as well as... Gligar as a defogger, and that still didn't feel like enough some weeks just because of matchup dependent. Yeah. So, anyways, I'll let I'll let you finally talk now because I know you had some heavy thoughts on this. Oh man, I immediately like you see Cure on Black Magus as well. I see Iron Boulder, Galarian Zapdos, mate. Mate, these two mons I love, even though I know Bold is not as great as people say, I still love the mon. I think it's still a good mon, especially in a meta like this, where it comes in, it clicks a button, and it switches out. If a team doesn't have, like, a Mega Agron or, like, a Corv, it kind of just dents a hole in the team. Like, I'm being yeah, you 100% talk about, honest. You talk about... Uh, click a button, switch out. But what are you switching out into? Like, bulky Mega Scizor, Swampert, and like that's it. I guess if you bring Wiggly or Umbreon, yeah, like, that's kind of my problem with the team as well. It's like, sure, you got these Mega Breakers, but like when you do need to switch out, inevitably, if someone clicks U turn on you or makes a good double, it's like, what do you switch out into? Like, obviously, you got some good Wish Pastures. But Swampert has no source of recovery by itself. Yeah. Like, it's just sketchy in some places. It's murky in some areas. Oh, I 100% agree, and that's why it's not higher. That's why it's seven instead of, like, three. Yeah. Uh, but speaking of going higher, um, our number six spot, we have um, the Fighting Lando Tees. 
uh, coached by Red Sox. Yes, I agree. Six is in fact higher than seven. When well, when we're going in reverse like this, <laughs> I should specify. Yeah. Um. Yeah. God, I this is prep nightmare. God, how did you manage to pick the three most annoying fucking Pokemon in draft? <laughs> and Terrapa like, goes for Arthorn and Screamtail. Like, oh my. Not Benny is. I just hate facing that Pokemon. Yeah, you've got like. Lucky. I would forfeit if I saw this team in prep just because I'm not dealing with fucking a 100 turn Screamtail, Ferrothorn, Tapu Fini <laughs> game with. Uh, Ferrothorn spikes. Like, that's not happening. Um, so, I'll give you a little fun fact here, Joe. They played this game today. So, uh, this coach played today against one of our topper teams that were ranked higher. I think it was number two. Um, not spoiling who they versed or anything. Um, oh, it doesn't matter. Um, they legit got bopped by Terracon Calder. Yep. No, I can see that. What I'm, uh, I'm trying to imagine is it was it like Terra Steel? Hmm. Was the Conkelder like Terra Steel? Nope. It was Terra Normal in a Trick Room. Ah, that makes sense too. And then he switched in Finny on it, and Finny got bopped to um down to twenty percent from full. Yep, I can see it. <laughs> Yeah, Noah. Yeah, this team is uh certainly something. No grounded poison. I'll be okay. I should ask you this first. Do you know how the Tapu Fini Toxic Spice interaction works? Before I say anything about no grounded poison, uh, believe it still happens, doesn't it? You see, I think so too. Here's the real question. Do you know how to edit? <laughs> Continue. Because I was thinking we could just test this real quick. Because <laughs> I, because if it, if it works like normal, if Talk to Spice works with normal, then I have to have start having conversation with this team. It's like that is a significant problem with this team. It's a significant hole. Um... But if Tapu feeding Misty Sturge. Sure. Let's... Locks toxic spike poison. Then I, it's some, it's still a problem, but like not that much of one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Let, let's quickly let's yeah. let's sort this out. I'm just, uh, okay. I'm just gonna bring you bring Feeny. I'll bring the toxic spikes Pokemon. So, Actually, so you gotta I'll bring. bring something. I'll bring two mons. So I'll bring something. You set up toxic spikes so one, then I'll t send them Feeny. Okay. Okay. I'll bring something fast. This is live. You guys are getting this live. This is, this is research, and honestly, it's research. Bro. This is going to be very important. And like, I'm sorry to uh, whoever the coach is, because the Red Sox, Alex. I'm sorry, man, because if this works, you're getting exposed live on YouTube, <laughs> like. Let's be real. I didn't know this. Yeah. So, like, if the Unova coaches know, then uh, good for them. But they might, they probably don't. So, uh, I do apologize for this. Now, if it doesn't work, I think no grounded poison is like fine. It's fine. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, let me do this. I'll just drag it over, mate. Okay. Well, I see you brought a Pokemon that doesn't take poison damage. <laughs> well, it's fine, because I'm switching on Feeny, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So I, just, well, I think I my question this. is more like, if Verge up, <laughs> does the other Pokemon that's not Feeny take it? But I don't think it really matters. So obviously they go up, but I'm wondering, like... So now I just no, get Feeny back in. Matter. Yeah, I don't take any damage. Wow. 
Wow. That's crazy. I'm not boots or anything. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, that changes my whole perspective. Okay. That is definitely something. Now, I will say Earthquake is still a bitch on this team. Like, and adding a grounded poison would obviously stack on that. Like, facing a strong ground type is absolute hell for this team. Yeah. Offensively. Um, same with uh, outside Tropicus, of course. Ghost types really hurt. Uh, oh no dark type. Yeah, I I couldn't even tell you if Glade got pursuit. I'll be I could look that up right now. Yeah. Uh, but like, what is ever running pursuit? You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, can I also just say that I just feel like you drop nine tails in Armada and pick up two different mons. No, I agree with that. I agree with that. Like, uh, even, maybe a secondary terror cap, even though Jolteon's kind of goaded. Yeah. Bruh, Jolteon um, bloody um, won 6 0 in semi finals for me in BRL season 12 in like 12 turns. I will I will put it out there that uh, Galade does not get pursuit. Also, another thing I kind of have a gripe with, with this team is. Uh, the lack of momentum, it's just Jolteon and Screamtail Baton Pass. But don't get me wrong, both phenomenal, right? But when you have a Mega Glade, a Terrapagos, a Zygarde, an Entei, it's another one of those teams that you just want momentum spam into, get yeah, great yeah. positioning until one of them can get in. I will say, right. you brought Choice Scarfed Zygarde today yeah. with Facade against to Toxic Spikes. I fuck with it. Like, Ed, that's like, amazing prep. It is. Especially if they did end up knowing how the Feeny thing worked. Yeah. Uh, like, you got exposed, Alex. Caught on 4K on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, this team is... Uh, I like it. I like parts of it more parts than probably any of the previous teams which makes sense since it's high up yeah the, the nine tails in our Maldo pick just don't make sense to me i'm also scared of any one terror captain team it just naturally kind of like turns my brain off a little bit yeah but at the end of the day this fucking your first eight picks will just win you like more than a few games by themselves yeah yeah. Uh, so, uh, we'll uh, go ahead and talk about Tanbeer and how fucking we keep letting people draft Spectre or Mega Meta Champ somehow. Yeah, I don't know why. Uh, like, man, he, I think he sniped about probably like a good four or five people on the Rillaboom. A lot of people were upset when Rillaboom got taken. Um, my main gripe, gripes, gripes, however you say the word, with this team, um, Volcanion is, like, okay, like, it's so much better with Terra, I just think it being your water and fire type is just a no, um, the other thing is, like, Terra Gramble, like, I'm a big Gramble lover, like, I love Gramble a lot, but it being Terra is... I would like to see a bit more of a defensive Terra here, instead of having two offensive Terra caps. Um, even Terra Overclaw. I think Terra Overclaw is better than Gramble, but obviously it's just points-wise as well. I, I would fight you on that, because I feel like Gramble with Terra is just running defensive 80% of the time. Mm. At least that what it should be doing you see i was Even running fairies... like defensive gramble and wdl in low tier and it was like av like max hp max spadef and it was still taking like 50 percent from a lot of things no i know and that's like gramble being a fair type obviously fantastic type i feel like it's one of those pokemon that's just gonna benefit from like a two-turn terra even though it's not the most defensive pokemon in the world if you're able to just win a 50-50 and flip a matchup on its head 
and trade with a, like even like a 12 point Pokemon, then you just get its worth back. Now, Heracross will be probably tearing most of the time, but I don't think Grand Bull's necessarily a bad Terra captain, even as an even, even defensively. Yeah. Like outside of, outside of that, I uh like I'm gonna start off with a negative. It's mainly that Zapdos is the sole removal because I don't count Volcanion. Oh no, hell no. And the team fucking hates heavy duty boots and spikes. Like this team is not one that will be running boots a lot. Um I'm trying to look. The lack of momentum is also concerning, like Volk or uh, Zapdos, Rillaboom, two of the better ones. Don't get me wrong, but when you just build around Spectre, Mega Metacham, even like Lycanroc, Dusk, and Overquill, they all value momentum so much. And I sound like a broken record, and I know it, but genuinely, Mega Metacham with momentum is so busted i'm yep. using it right now it's literally the most brain dead pokemon i've ever used in my life um, i got three kills with it in my last battle if i made if i calced and saw that a close combat killed a pokemon uh instead of just making predict i click Z headbutt they switched into a dark type uh when i could have just click close combat i would have gotten six kills um so Give me one second. Okay. I'll get up my uh, you, you Mega Medi or... team. Okay, so my Mega Medi team consisted of Mega Medi, Samurott, Hisui, Corv, Terra Jolteon, Ampipom, Magma. Um, and yes, Magma gets teleport. So I had a lot of momentum, and Mega Medi went 14 and 1 in 8 games. So, um, you mind if I read you mine? Yeah. Uh, it's gonna have well, it's gonna have one Catmon in there. Um so currently my team is one and three, not very good. Mega Matchamp is eight and four, but should be eleven and four. And one of the games it got zero kills. Um where's my team real quick? I I just lost it. The team consists of Mega Metachamp, Snailstrom, which is basically Araquanid mixed with Gliscor. It's a pretty pretty cool Pokemon. Gets sticky webs, all that stuff. Goldengo, Hydreigon, Gligar, Lycanroc Terra, Electros Terra, Sylveon, Psychozar, Vileproof. Now, Crook. Yes. Based off all the Pokemon, what what do they have in common? What do most of them have in common? Uh, would that be something called Momentum, Joe? It would, and it's a lot of fat momentum. A lot of slow momentum. And this team just does not have that, which is a shame. Because that's how you get Spectre, that's how you get Mega Matchham in for free, and put just absolute pressure on anything that stays in. Even Lycanroc Dusk would appreciate because it's frail. 100%. But other than that, I do really like the team. The speed tiers are a little wonky, but not necessarily bad. Yeah. Um, I feel like Overquill does kind of carry a lot of the burden to be, you know, the ghost resist, and it doesn't even get, like, pursue or knock, which is a little sad, and obviously it doesn't get recovery and there's no wish. So, like, once Overquill gets chipped, ghost types can kind of run the game, especially if you're on, like, a scarfed out sweet so Spectre, or, like, a Cassib Berry. If you run a little tech, you can get around it. But, uh... Yeah, I, I fuck with the team heavy. Uh, there's just a couple holes I'd fix, but it's nothing that the rest of the teams don't have. Exactly. Um, so, so now we get to top four. This is interesting. Go for gold, yeah. Oh, me again. I actually don't know if I started with the last one. I don't think I did. Uh, um, what was the last one? I oh, know I started with this. I started with the last one, so that's fine. So can we can we actually talk about probably the two best Terra Pokemon in the format, in my opinion. I think Sinistra's unanimous. 
I think Monkey Dory with Terra just becomes better Gengar, who's already... Now, Gengar was on Fraud Watch as of Gen 9. But Terra Monkey Dory is actually a menace. Yep. Uh, you pair that with spikes from Samurott, fast Pokemon like Iron Valiant, Zerora, the great utility of Iron Treads, and Moltres. This team becomes super shy. Now, Mega Altera feels a little random just because there's already so many win cons. But I respect it. It's a very good Pokemon. It's just a little selfish. That's yeah. all. Uh, I like the idea of Snorlax is very good. I don't particularly love it as, or love using it, but I respect it. And then Shuckle, like it's obviously a meme. Like don't fuck with Shuckle, but at least has its niche. Um, I think the team becomes a little shaky to me whenever you get into the hazard situation. Yeah. Because even though Knuckle gets webs and rocks and tries to get rocks, no spikes, no T-spikes, and uh, Monkey Dory can very easily tear out of absorbing T-spikes, which kind of sucks. Uh, and Sinistra can tear out of its... Oh, uh, sorry, I guess that doesn't matter. I was going to say it can tear off a ghost to spin block, but you don't really have that problem. Mm. Uh, Treads, goaded spinner... Moltres, go to Defogger. So I don't think you really care that you don't have hazards, but still would be nice. Um, because I feel like nothing really... Barring, like, Talonflame or Volcarona, I don't feel like anything really... Actually, you know what? I'm capping. I forgot Samurai Hisui does its one funny thing. Just because it doesn't show up on the prep doc. <laughs> I think everything I said back... About Hazard, uh, yeah, Samurott is a dog. Like I was waiting for how long it would take you to notice. Yeah, Sinistra tearing out its ghost type will actually matter then. Um, this team honestly benefits from it, the opponents running heavy duty boots super well, just because Valiant can't get like outscarfed, obviously, and uh, you can't run left or uh. Does, stuff doesn't prefer to run lefties to take Iron Valiant or Zara Aura hits. Yeah. As well as like Monkey Dory. And uh yeah, I this team is just very good. Also, I'd like to put out there that it's eleven thirty at night for me. So uh, you know, eleven thirty brain is basically the equivalent of me being like three beers deep. Yeah. I just kind of be saying shit without thinking. Um uh, don't worry, we've got three teams left. Yeah, here. I fuck with the team. I don't really have any uh, any major gripes with it that I've not talked about. I'd love to hear your opinion on it, though. Uh, Terra Shen the show, that's all I have to say. That's good. Yeah, that Pokemon is <laughs> so fucking There's a good. reason why it's, like, legit my top competitive mon at the moment. That was the reason why I, don't I drafted know how... it for round three. I, I do not know how... Rhyperior was banned, which to be fair, it probably should have. Yeah, but not. But, this was, but this was banned. Yeah. Like, whenever we did our mini Ubers League, Ubers Light, whatever you want to call it, Sinistra finished like top 10. Yeah. MVP. Pokemon's insane. Yeah. No, I, I, I really like this team. Uh, I think Snorlax is great. Uh, especially as your main spadef wall, like this team needed one, and you got it. Uh, my probably my biggest gripe is, I mean, you got Sinisha as your like defensive wall, I guess, but like having like one true defensive role on the team, like Sinisha does get iron defense and becomes very bulky if you run max defense bold. Um, but yeah, ha not having one real true defensive one. And like this, uh, Shuckle has two thirty, I guess I get it, but like I don't know. This team hates running into an Edgequake Pokemon. Yeah. Um. Also, I figured out what my biggest gripe is, is that it's super tricky for me to analyze because it's got just so many hidden things. Um. The like when you just put out the screenshot, it, you don't see everything. And, like, this is my second time seeing the teams, and 
one of them was just during class today. I was just kind of giving it a glance. So um, I've not really had the time to dive into these teams. But uh, I think that's a good segue into uh, our top three. The Louisville Bats, coached by Mavs. I've shown the name. Um, I've shown names. Deal with it. <laughs> um, oh, boy. Can we just talk about your first four picks? Oh, sorry. First f- f- six minus age of slash. Um, so, basically, your first four plus Terra Florges. Can we just talk about them? Um, no. Can we talk about the first eight picks? Fuck with all of them. I don't fuck with Age of Slash. <laughs> I'll be 100% honest. Fair. Fair. Listen, secretly, I don't really, like, fuck with Age of Slash, but it's annoying. Oh, yes, it is annoying, and I think it's one of those Pokemon that you either know how to use it, or you don't, and it just sits there. Um, But can we just talk about how Univer... You let this guy get Pelifin... Latios and Sneasler first three rounds you ha- legit got this guy three of the most offensive breakers slash sweepers because they can be both uh, all three of them can be both um, first round ending paired it with Tinglu which just sets up hazards against you and then unless you're running heavy duty boots you, you've lost sturdy you've lost sashes uh, you've lost potential and- rolls on resist berries. And you get whirlwinded. Yeah. Um, the biggest gripe I have, or well, both Jay and I have with this team, is you're running Ting Lu without a bloody spinner. Why? Uh, low key, Aegis just let it. Listen, like, I fuck with, like, Electro Sui. Rotom P. I think Arbleva probably stays for Sneasler. But, like, you drop Aegis Slash plus, like, one of Electrode slash Rotom P, and you can just pick up similar typed mods with, like, a Rapid Spinner and stuff. Like, part my main gripe with having no Rapid Spinner, not it just being with Ting Lu, is that I find it very difficult. Like, it's you've got to be a special... A special group of Pokemon, um, just power wise, to get away with having no removal. Like, your only real removal is Rotom Defog, which doesn't even like to run it most of the time. Exactly. Because uh, I'm not counting Gladios, Forges, and hell no to Cutie Fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, this so, team would legit be first if you just changed a couple things. Listen, you know what's fucked? This Pokemon is that different breed of powerful to get away with it. Especially because, like, now, like, none of the Pokemon here love running boots, but all of them are very passable. I don't think any of them are, like, extremely hindered by running boots, to be honest. Other than, like, Sneasler. Um, Erm, outside of that, def- the defensive chart looks bad, but it's really, like, not that bad, um... Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I don't really, uh, know what else to say. It is not, like... Fire types might be a little... I say fire types might be a little tricky, that's not true, I just look at the defensive chart, like... Yeah. The defensive chart as a whole is deceptive, because... Like, say all of these teams are ground weak. Well, if you have a good water type to come in and revenge it afterwards, it doesn't really matter. Uh, obviously, it does because you don't have very many switches to EQ, but you can always threaten the Pokemon out. Yeah, and That's just kind of yeah. something I want to touch on because I know at least a lot of starting coaches, which, albeit Unova is not all starting coaches, kind of get a little too locked in on that and don't understand that it's okay to have weaknesses type-wise if you're able to get around it offensively. And I think the greatest interaction of that is ground versus water because it happens so often. Yeah. Um, Outside of that, the speed tiers are 
won't be. But, yeah. like, that's the only real gripe I have. There's, yeah, other than that, it's not much else. Like, you change, like, a couple things, and this team shoots up to first. I'll be 100% mm -hmm. real. Yeah, especially with good creativity, with, like, King Lou, Asia Slash, and Forges. Yeah. Like, I've, I've up with this. This is, out of all the teams, this is the scariest. Yeah. Um, Which is saying, got Scizor, Cure Black. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is uh, the team you allude to that just smokes the Tapu Fini team. <laughs> yeah. Um, moving on um, to our number two spot, oh. Portland Pincers, oh. coached by Jig. Um, boy, I love this team so much. Like, Oh my god, I looked at this team and I immediately knew it was a top three team. Like, you have Gorging Fire, you have Glow King, you have Terra Conkelder. We legit saw today how threatening this thing can be under Trick Room. Um, and can I would also just like to say he brought no speed Gorging Fire into Trick Room and it worked. Was it like Bandit um, Heat Crash or something? Um. I can double check if you want to just continue on. I can check. Yeah, I mean, this team is like, let's be real. Like, when we talk about consistency, cloaking might be the embodiment, the embodiment of that word. It's just so good. And let's, in draft, I've seen a surprising amount of people call Gouging Fire a fraud. So when you pair that with Darkrai, who's also on Fraud Watch consistently, you start to like have your doubts, but Togekiss, Ogre Pond, Cornerstone, Scizor, Blastoise, Quagsire, hell, even Terra, Alola, and Sandslash, I am not quite sure how they fit all of these Pokemon onto a team together. It just like, points -wise, works. Doesn't make sense in my head. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, he brought boost, so he brought booster energy attack with 184 speed. Mm, okay. Just, um, I do think my biggest gripe with this team is um, lack of momentum. It's just kind of, it's like, what, Baton Pass, Togekiss, plus U-Turn says, I guess you got Flip Turn Blastoise. So it's not, like, egregious. Yeah, Um. the other thing well, I'm going to touch on right I, now is Togekiss is coming every single week. Mm -hmm. I mean, every single week. Otherwise, you just auto lose to, like, Banded EQ Landris Therian. I mean, even then, you just lose to any Edgequake Pokemon. Yeah. You gotta yeah. rely on, like, Max Defense Quagsire or, like, Blastoise, who we talked about this in Ore, at least wants to have the option to run Shell Smash. It doesn't want to be absolutely pigeonholed into Being Flip a, Turn, yeah, Rapid Spin, or. And with Sandslash yeah. being your other spinner, and it's your Terramon, you're using that thing offensively, so Blastoise is your dedicated spinner. Yeah, but uh, my number one, by far my number one gripe with this team, is that water types kind of wall the piss out of you. Obviously, we saw that not be a problem with Clunk Elder uh, being there, but like in general, you know, you got Gouging Fire, one of the better checks to it is a water type. You got Scizor, uh, can't bolt punch a water type that well. Shell Smash Blast Toys and Quagsire can't really do much to water types. Sand Slash as well. And your uh, only water type is Ogre Punk Horror Stone, who's not switching in on like Scalds and stuff. So that's a little scary. Additionally, um, most water type beers, I'm looking at you electric types, would have Volt Switch. It's just cherry on top that's a pivot move. Oh. Edge Quake Mons run through this team. But I feel like you have the offensive firepower to kind of bypass a lot of those um, weaknesses, in my opinion. I will say Raticat, or Raticate has to be a bit pick because, like, it is. Like, you will pick after over all these other good one tier or uh, one pointers. Yeah. Like I get it though, because I mascot picked Tropius and it did nothing all season, but <laughs> looked cool when it won. 
<laughs> so I get it. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Legit, the only reason that this team is not... Number um, one. Number one, sorry. Um, is literally due to... Um... <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting distracted. Um, is You're good. Literally due to the other team just being, like, better. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. I, I don't think it's a coincidence that the top four, I'll be real, top four teams, probably just top five. I, I think the top five teams, and this is probably where you agree because you put, you place them all top five for a reason. I don't think it's a coincidence that the top five teams are by far the scariest. Like, just upon first glance, you got the numerous amount of offensive threats. I think that kind of embodies Gen 9 as a whole. Yeah. So, I'm not surprised. I, I feel like that's also just a good baseline for power rankings, so I feel like you kind of see that trend in other videos. It's not that this team isn't weaker then, or it's not better than the team we have at first. It's just like you you understand. Like you'll understand. And uh I think we should get on to the big reveal. Yeah, so um obviously if you guys have been keeping track, um our number one team is the Solemn Southwest Stone Journey, coached by Polaris. Polaris. Yeah, so Herb, I'll go ahead and start this off by saying that Polaris, we're in a trios team tour together. You better fucking draft like this again. <laughs> or I will show up to your fucking house, knock on your door, and see what's wrong with you. Like I I I like I I'm speechless. Like how do how do you get all these Pokemon on one team? How do the other people allow that? Yeah, uh, this was, he was first, by the way, so he got first pick. Well, did, uh, I don't, if I'm not mistaken, somebody made, like, made it to, like, three picks in, like, not three rounds in, three picks in, and then just, like, dipped for no reason, and yeah. they took over. Um, yeah. I oh, left I the feel server, like... yeah, he drafted Polt and then left the server. <laughs> That's, That's right. That's crazy. I feel like the only real argument you can make for this team, like, is I I don't even think you could say lack of removal just because Psychozar and Rotom are that good. Plus, you got Glamora, Mortal Spin. I think it all comes down to what types you do and don't have, and part of that is having double single types on a nine mod roster. So, like, obviously, you're missing like fighting, ground flying. Those being the main important ones. But, I mean, there's not really much you could do. It does kind of suck that you have, like, double rock, but they do different roles. It's respectable here. Like, the fa just the fact that you doubled up on rock and water, not calling them bad, but it does make sense why, you, you know, you don't have a fire type. You don't have a fighting type. Or a ground or flying. Uh, the biggest concern for this team is just going to be Moonblast spam. And yes, Melmetal, phenomenal AV Pokemon, doesn't want to have to run it every week. And that's just the sad reality. It can, but doesn't want to. Yeah. Uh, the second biggest gripe I have with this team is just the speed tiers. Now, they aren't bad, but it's like after Rotom Wash, like probably mods with like. I'm going to say 70, because I think 75 can realistically probably creep up to Zero Speed Glamora with, like, not that much investment. So I'm going to say 70, base like 70 and below, can just run max bulk. And when you think about 70s and below, they're already extremely bulky. So you're giving them max bulk and a boosting nature, and it becomes that much more difficult for stuff like... Deancy and Dragapults, and even Wellspring to clean up. Uh, this is also just one of the best Terra Captain pairings in the league, and that's also a trend you see within the uh, top five. It's just the shift in Terra Captains. 
yeah, dude, but like... I, I would meet ride this team all day if I could. <laughs> yeah, but I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. I mean, there's not really much more you can say. This team's just phenomenal. It's just great. Like you guys are just yeah. dumb for letting um the Polk team draft Megan Deancey and Mel Middle. Um, I'm putting it bluntly. Um, and then Glamora Rosenwash. Oh my god. Yeah. And Ogapon Wellspring, like that ground weakness, like it's still there, but like you have two of the best resists in the game. Um and then you have two of the like two really good terror caps in low kicks, like Terra Bug, Silver Powder, Tinted Lens, First Impression Leech Life. Hurts, man. Um and then Terra Pikachu, I've legit six O teams with just Terra Pikachu by itself. It's terrifying. Like it's <laughs> One of the most silent killers I've ever seen. Like, you just don't think about it in prep, and then you auto lose to take out E Speed, Volt Tackle Spam, or like random Terra Water Surf, Thunderbolt, Volt Switch. Insane Pokemon. Yeah. There's like not much m more else I can say. Like, it's just preference. Like, obviously, we're just two guys doing PRs, but. Like, Jay could hard agree with me that this was the obvious number one team. Yeah, no, I, I wasn't really keep up with you, Nova, but I saw this team, because, like, obviously I'm in a group chat with players for the team tour, but also I saw it being posted in MPBA, and I, I had no question. I legitimately asked myself, what team is beating this? Like, the thing is with nine mods, yes, it's going to be matchup dependent. I really don't think you care just because of, uh, like, I'm not going to say the versatility because, like, most of these Pokemon have one role they're super well known for, it, with the second or third being viable. You know, I'm kind of looking at, like, Glamora or even Rotom Wash. But it's versatile enough to where. You shouldn't get matchup baited too hard uh, in multiple matchups. So I don't think a bad matchup excuse can be really made. Yeah. Like, this team was pretty just well-drafted, obviously because it's number one. But to stop really all the bad matchups without inherently counter-teaming, like you're not just drafting a shitter because it stops one of your potential matchups. Yeah. Well, I think that about wraps it up for our PRs. I would agree with you. Um, so, thank you so much, Jay, for commentating this with me. It was very much appreciated. For having me. Thanks for doing the slideshow, most importantly. Of course. No worries. Uh, and thank you all so much for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Uh, once again, any problems, um, go complain to Shazboy and Jode. Because I don't give a shit. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but to be honest, uh, I enjoy making these uh, and just helping out um, people. As I'm still learning, Jay's still learning. We're all still learning about draft. There's always new stuff to learn. Like today, we learned about the Tapu Fini Misty Surge T Spikes interaction. Um, and uh, I will say, obviously, we talked about go. Like, if you complain, go to other people but if you do want genuine feedback our dms are always open yeah i love to talk pokemon with people i'm a yapper when it comes to mons i would love to explain my thought processes in detail and talk with you i'd love seeing different perspectives like getting an eye to eye with people about pokemon maybe i don't like i don't like using i don't like I don't think it's that good. I would love to hear someone else's thoughts on it. So, my DMs are always there. Um, Y'all know where to find me on Discord. Um, so, yeah. That's all I really have to say. Yep. Uh, once again, uh, thank you, Jay, for joining me. And uh, thank you to everyone for watching. <clears throat> uh, until next time, guys. Uh, stay safe. Be yourself. And peace. Peace.